Welcome to this presentation on the biodiversity of spiders, part of the biodiversity course offered through Leiden University. I'm Jeremy Miller, a researcher at the Naturalis Biodiversity Center and a specialist on spider taxonomy and biodiversity. Today's presentation is divided into four sections. First, we'll cover the evolution of the arthropods. Then we'll go through the arachnid orders. Then we'll cover spider evolution and diversity. And finally, we'll have a practical exercise. The Biodiversity of Spiders, Part 1, Evolution of the Arthropods. Arthropods are characterized by an exoskeleton made up at least in part of chitin. Chitin is hard and provides protection as well as a structure for the attachment of muscles and other structures. But a hard exoskeleton does not permit continuous growth so arthropods must periodically molt, that is, shed their old exoskeleton for a new, larger one. Arthropods are generally vulnerable during this time and shortly after molting. The term arthropod refers to their jointed legs. Arthropods generally have their bodies organized into major regions, or tagma. Arthropods comprise about two-thirds of described biodiversity, and about 11,000 new species are being described every year. The first arthropods appear in fossils dated to the Lower Cambrian, around 540 million years ago. This was a very different world than we live in today. The planet was warmer than it is now. Most of the land was aggregated in the Southern Hemisphere, forming a short-lived supercontinent called uh, Panotina. This is not to be confused with the much more famous supercontinent of Pangaea from the late Paleozoic and early Mesozoic eras. Life was basically restricted to the sea. During this period, several major phyla of life appear for the first time in what has been called the Cambrian Explosion. At about 520 million years ago, the first trilobite fossils appeared. Trilobites were hard-bodied arthropods which reinforced their chitinous exoskeleton with calcium carbonate, the same material that makes up mollusk shells. Because of this, trilobites tend to fossilize easily. But the earliest trilobites were already quite diverse, suggesting either a long period of missing fossils or a very rapid evolutionary radiation. The Burgess Shale is a famous deposit dated from a bit later than this, around 505 million years ago. Trilobites are well represented here, as are many softer bodied life forms that generally fossilize only under particular conditions. Fossils include a wide range of mysterious and fantastic organisms, including some early arthropod lineages and close relatives of arthropods. The first evidence of arthropods colonizing the land appears during the Silurian, about 420 million years ago. Plants had already started to colonize the land during the Ordovician, about 455 million years ago. But Silurian deposits indicate for the, the first land plant megafossils from swampy or marshy habitats. The earliest arthropods on land included predatory trigonotarbids and scorpions, both arachnids, and non-predatory millipedes. Fossilized arthropod tracks from this period contribute evidence of early terrestrial life. Trilobites flourish during the lower Paleozoic before slipping into a long decline. Much of the trilobite diversity was lost during the Devonian, and trilobites finally disappeared in the mass extinction that ended the Permian about 252 million years ago. Trilobites filled a wide range of ecological roles, including predators, scavengers, and filter feeders. Some lived on the seafloor, some swam and fed on plankton, and some were amphibious, venturing onto land for short periods. The largest trilobites were about 45 centimeters long and weighed four and a half kilograms. About 17,000 species are known and more are described every year. Crustaceans are a large group of mostly water-dwelling arthropods with a total documented diversity of over 67,000 species. They are important components of zooplankton a critical resource in marine food webs. They include the tiny Daphnia, a model organism in studies of the environment and epigenetics. They include the sessile and apparently very unarthropod-like barnacles. 
but they are probably most familiar to us in the form of seafood, such as crab, shrimp, and lobsters. Crustaceans generally have their bodies organized into two major body regions, or tagma. These are the cephalothorax and the abdomen. Variable numbers of legs arise from the cephalothorax, and additional legs are usually found on the abdomen as well. The legs are generally biramous, meaning they have two branches. Most crustaceans have compound eyes and two pairs of antennae. Also, most crustaceans have a planktonic juvenile stage known as an alpleus larva, featuring three pairs of appendages destined to develop ontologically into the two pairs of antennae and the mandible, and also a single median compound eye. Crustaceans have ventured onto land several times in their evolutionary history. Isopods and amphipods are both largely water-dwelling groups with some more or less terrestrial species. Terrestrial arthropods and amphipods are generally vulnerable to desiccation. Our most familiar terrestrial isopods are the wood lice, often associated with decaying wood in cool, moist habitats. Some terrestrial arthropods can roll themselves up into a ball, a behavior used for defense that also conserves moisture. Terrestrial amphipods, sometimes called landhoppers or sand fleas for the beach-dwelling species, have a wide distribution on southern continents and have only in recent times colonized parts of Europe and North America. Many crabs are amphibious to some extent, able to spend time on dry land. Some have evolved to live predominantly on land, but still need to return to the water for reproduction. A few land crabs have direct development and do not need to return to the water for reproduction. Hermit crabs are similarly amphibious, and a few species have also evolved to live predominantly on land, but these require periodic access to water to maintain functional gills and for reproduction. Myriapods include two familiar groups, the millipedes and the centipedes. About 19,000 species are described. We've already heard a bit about millipedes being among the first animals on land. Millipedes are generally slow-moving detritivores. Millipedes are distinct from other myriapods in that they have two pairs of legs arising from each segment, rather than a single pair. There are about 15,000 species of millipedes described. Although millipedes and centipedes are often confused, they are really very different kinds of animals. Centipedes are generally fast, venomous predators. There are about 3,000 species of centipedes known. There are two lesser known but still important myriapod groups. The symphyla are generally small, about 2 to 10 millimeters, soft myriapods that feed on decaying vegetation, and about 200 species are known. Parapods are even smaller than symphyla at half to 2 millimeters and can achieve high densities in soil. About 800 species of these are known. Until recently, only terrestrial myriapods were known. A recent study of a euthic carcinoid from a Devonian marine deposit reveals unique characteristics shared with myriapods, supporting the theory that these are each other's closest relatives. The Calicerata includes the arachnids and their marine relatives. Arachnids are generally terrestrial arthropods that include familiar groups like spiders, scorpions, and mites, as well as lesser-known groups. Calicerates have their bodies organized into two tagma, although these are secondarily fused in some groups, and lack antennae. But the characteristic from which their name derives refers to the hinged, pinching form of their mouth parts. All other arthropod groups are mandibulate, meaning that the mouth parts include two plates that grind together. This is similar to the way your jawbone, or mandible, grinds against your upper jaw when you eat, except that in mandibulate arthropods, the whole mechanism is oriented 90 degrees off from the way it is in the vertebrate jaw. Hexapods, the insects and their relatives, are the largest arthropod group with about 900,000 species described. Insects have their, have their bodies divided into three tagma, the head, thorax, and abdomen. Most insects have two pairs of wings arising from the second and third segments of the thorax. 
They also have three pairs of legs arising from the thorax. The first powered flight was made by insects during the Carboniferous period. Early flying insects included large dragonfly-like animals with wingspans approaching one meter. Some insect groups, such as fleas, have secondarily reduced or lost wings. So to review the characteristics of the four living groups of arthropods, all are mandibulate, except for the unique Calicerata, with their pair of hinged mouth parts. Legs are usually biramus and crustaceans, uniramus and the other groups. The number of legs is usually four pairs in the calicerates, three pairs in hexapods, and variable in crustaceans and myriapods. Crustaceans typically have two pair of antennae, one pair in myriapods and hexapods, and none in calicerates. Crustaceans, myriapods, and, and hexapods typically have compound eyes, but compound eyes and calicerates are limited to horseshoe crabs, the extinct eurypterids, and some fossil scorpions. The current phylogenetic consensus indicates that insects are derived from crustaceans. So one way of looking at it would be to say that insects are simply the most successful terrestrial lineage of crustaceans. In classification, we generally favor monophyletic groups, meaning taxonomic groups should contain all descendants of a common ancestor. Crustaceans, as traditionally defined in light of recent phylogenetic advances, are not a monophyletic group without including insects. The monophyletic group that includes both crustaceans and insects is referred to as the pan crustacea. Together, arthropods comprise nearly two-thirds of described living species, and of these, the hexapods are clearly dominant, accounting for well over half of known species. So to review, arthropods appeared in the fossil record more than half a billion years ago. They were the first animals to colonize the land, a few tens of million years behind the first land plants. They were the first to fly, they suffered the loss of both trilobites and eurypterids at the end of the Permian about a quarter of a billion years ago. Uh, that was, of course, the greatest mass extinction in history. And they did all this before the appearance of the dinosaurs and long before the first mammals. <laughs>